The DJI Osmo Nano is basically right around the corner. Leaks point to a September 10th reveal, so we're only days away from it going official. Forums are full of talk, people are already debating specs and the hype feels very real, but instead of just talking about the Nano, let's also see how it stacks up against Insta360's Go Ultra, because these two are shaping up to be the go-to pocket action cams. Both are designed for people who want something tiny, portable, and super easy to mount. But their design philosophies couldn't be more different. DJI is going with a slim, pill-shaped body that makes mounting cleaner without extra bulk, while Insta360 sticks to its pebble-like camera. Weight-wise, there isn't much in it. They're both feather light. But early chatter suggests people are vibing more with the Nano's pill design. The Osmo Nano is rumored to come with a slim OLED touchscreen module that snaps right onto the camera for quick framing and controls, keeping the whole setup compact. The Insta360 Go Ultra takes a different route with its action pod, which adds a larger 2.5 inch flip up screen that's great for vlogging and lining up shots, but it also makes the camera noticeably bulkier, especially when the screen is flipped up. Compared to that, the Nano should stay slimmer and easier to carry or mount overall. When it comes to video, the Go Ultra already delivers solid results, 4K at 60 frames per second and slow motion up to 240 frames per second at 1080p. The Nano, according to leaks, will at least match that but might even push up to 5.3K at 60, something Insta360 doesn't currently offer in this lineup. Sensor size is the big unknown with the Nano. A 1-inch sensor would be huge news in a camera this small, but realistically it might land a bit smaller, closer to what Insta360 offers with its 1 over 1.28 inch CMOS. If DJI does manage the full inch though, it could mean noticeably better low light shots in detail. Both brands know stabilization is a deal breaker and they've got it covered. DJI with Rocksteady and Horizon Lock, Insta360 with Flow State backed by a 6 axis gyro. At this level, it's less about who does it better and more about personal preference in the look of the footage. Storage is a fun twist. The Nano is rumored to include built-in storage, 64 gigs or 128 gigs, and still give you a micro SD slot. Insta360 skips internal memory altogether but supports cards up to 2 terabytes. Battery life though leans toward Insta360 again, about 70 minutes on its own or up to 200 minutes with the action pod. The Nano might come in shorter but it charges faster over USB-C so you can get back up and running quicker. Accessories are where their strategies really split. Insta360 is pushing quirky, lifestyle-focused magnetic add-ons that let you pull off creative POV shots. DJI, on the other hand, seems to be aiming broader. The Nano's polymagnetic design suggests it'll work across multiple mounting surfaces, plus it's compatible with DJI's ProGrade action cam mounts and even a lot of third-party gear, giving it a more flexible ecosystem. And then there's the price. If leaks are right, the Nano will start at around $369 for the 64GB version and $399 for the 128GB, making it cheaper than the Go Ultra, which typically runs between $449 and $499 depending on the kit. Of course, we're still working with leaks on the DJI side, so it's not a full comparison yet. But from what's out there, the Nano looks like it could give Insta360 some serious competition. Especially if that sensor turns out to be bigger than expected. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Peace.